Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1 and I am happy to present the Vulcan rocket modeled by me in Blender. Uh, there had been another version of the Vulcan rocket available floating around but uh, that had the old textures, the old look to it. Uh, this is the newer look with the Vulcan logo and also uh, that model seemed to have the LOX pipe on the outside uh, nowadays they seem to have it inside, so we don't have quite as much greebling on the outside, but that sure made it a lot easier to model a rocket. It also gave me more time to model the BE-4 engine, so if we take a look, I did a, I think, reasonable job of it. Uh, so it's looking okay, I believe. Hopefully to decent standards, and so that tucks in, whoop, that tucks in uh, there. All right. Uh, I copied the stats that Realism Overall already had for the BE4 engine in the engine configs, so there's that. So what I made was the the engine, uh, this engine mount, the fuel tank, and I... Hmm... Those seem to be different numbers than... Okay, I think I need to... I changed the numbers because it seemed like the numbers were wrong. Uh, so I've been filling around with the burn times and trying to get the right mass. I still think that it might be a little bit off, but we don't have a whole lot of data. I was going by um, information on what the mass of the stage was and trying to figure it out from there. So if you want to find the parts, of course I'm going to link these parts in the video description. And if you want to find the parts, just type Falcon. And we have the BE4 up here, this one. Uh, there are other versions of the B4 around, I think. And we also have the interstage here. There's two interstages. Uh, there's this one that fits the wider uh, Centaur X stage. And then if you want to use uh, the Vulcan with the common Centaur, the single cent uh, single engine Centaur, which is this one, right? And uh, this doesn't come with the Vulcan rocket. It came with the Atlas V that I made. Uh, you can just use this interstage, which, which does come with this Vulcan. So that interstage on like that. So then you can use that one. And the fairings with the Atlas V that I made will work with this as well. So that's how we do that. But we're not going to be looking at that version this time. The RL10s are also from the Atlas V mod that I made. Uh, and you can find the video on the channel. Um, the RCS works. I added RCS to the Atlas V stages as well, but I'll uh, re-release those soon. I need to put more shininess on here, I think. It's looking a little bit dull. There is a Textures Unlimited config, but overall more shininess could be worthwhile. And I need to reconsider the frosty textures on the RL10s now. But here we go. So we've got that. Oh, uh, let me just mention we are uh, carrying a 18.5 ton payload, which is uh, supposedly it's max payload with two boosters uh, that might be it might be able to ca carry more than 18.5 tons of two boosters taking a look at a delta v but uh, i did not make the boosters this gem 63 is from kk launchers delta pack so kartoffel kuchin made that booster i i don't like making srbs so uh so we're just going to use that one from the delta pack and that should be available to everybody uh, otherwise, and of course our payload is just a procedural tank, but otherwise I've got everything here. Uh, the Centaur X there. Uh, you know it's underfueled right now because actually we don't want to have it fully fueled. I do recommend that you underfuel the top tank, especially if you don't have boosters on, but even with two boosters, two boosters, it may be advisable. Okay, so taking a look at the delta V and thrust to weight ratios, you'll notice that even with two boosters, uh, this only has a 1.26 off the ground. So if you're not using boosters at all and you're going with the 502 version, which is the boosterless version, I recommend actually underfueling even the first stage. So yeah, definitely do that and also underfuel the second stage. With two boosters, you don't have to underfuel the first stage but you still probably need to underfuel the second stage. Note the 15 minute burn time, and we've got 10,000 meters per second. You know what, honestly. I mean, yeah, let's just half fuel that. 
because uh, it's 18.5 tons and they say that that's the payload limit so yeah uh, there is no decoupler at the top of this stage so uh, if you want to separate off the payload you'll need to put a decoupler on there and I think that about does it let's take it outside and see how it goes I have not brought this to orbit yet so we are going to find out whether it works obviously if you underfuel the stages do make sure to turn off the fuel pumps there also it might be helpful to add MLI layers to avoid too much boil off so I have done some MLI layers there but here we go launching from Cape Canaveral ignition and launch so again I uh, I just copied the plumes from the Raptor engine config in realism overhaul uh, for real engines so that was not my doing I just took that plume because I don't know much about methalox plumes anyway in terms of scale it should be right I used a there was a cutaway poster available on the ULA website so I used that for a scale that had the feet markings on the side of it there are two fairing sizes, one meant for a single payload and another one that's taller that's meant for when it's carrying two payloads. Okay, well, the boosters are apparently out. I don't know when exactly they separate them, but I'm gonna separate them here. Okay. Probably you might want to add some separatrons on the inner stage here or the tank because it will otherwise be a very gentle separation let's put it that way the Centaur X uh, does I think have some ASUS capabilities it has a fuel cell here and uh, but that will only work if we're down at 95% anyway and its RCS runs on the hydrogen and oxygen rather than hydrazine fuel balance seems okay so I didn't do any obviously bad math there okay separation like I said not very vigorous ignition and our two RL10s and fairing set well that's straight out no problems there I think trying to look inside there to see if there was anything wrong. Oh, throttle up, but these don't throttle, so. And yes, let's pitch up as well. 0.37 G's, and that's after underfueling it. Uh, I might not have packed enough Delta V. Okay, it's gonna be close, but not quite right. Oh, did that? Oh, well, no. Uh, oh, we also lost communication. That caught me by surprise there. Uh, yeah, so we need a little bit more than that. Uh, also, the tra trajectory might have been a little bit off. I think we went a little bit too high. If we went a little bit lower, it'd be better. Okay, let me try one more time. I still need to put some commsats in this save. Okay, so that was not enough. 9,640. Uh, well, let's keep that up. So... So that's 200 more. And then if we can work on the trajectory a little bit and not get too high, maybe you'll be alright. Okay. Okay, well, we'll see what happens. I don't particularly feel good about 13 minute burn time either, but... Alright, ignition. And launch. If you also want to avoid a 15 minute burn time, or up to 19 minutes actually, if you fully fuel it, and uh, I verified that, that's apparently how long it would take to burn it with the full fuel load. And, um,. Yeah, if you want to avoid that, find yourself a BE3U. I may make one just for this, but I have to make one. I want to make a new Glen anyway, so 
I'll probably be making one. Nope, 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 the other way. I'll probably be making one. Okay, booster's off. Okay, separation and ignition. And fairings. Well, somehow I've managed to go just as high as I did last time. That's probably not a good thing. Well, we're falling back down at a prodigious rate. Let's see if that works out for us. Okay, well this doesn't seem to be ending up much better than last time. So, yeah, this is going to be an interesting rocket to try and figure out how to get right, as far as the launch trajectory is concerned. I'll probably hold off on that challenge for now, because I'm obviously not thinking about this right. I'll test the RCS some other time, because we just lost comms. Uh, yep, this is going to be interesting. But clearly its payload capacity is close to 18.5 tons as uh, as previously described. So yeah. Anyway, I hope you have more luck with the Vulcan rocket than I have so far here. <laughs> but at least the parts work. Alright, so with that tentative situation, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.